speaking of HER2, let's kind of turn to HER2 positive breast cancer. I think that's a great segue. Um, you know, I think that this really, as we all know, I think HER2 has really been a success story in the treatment, especially metastatic disease and early stage therapy. I mean, we have tremendous therapies now. I mean, the Cleopatra data that was announced a few, about a year and a half ago, showing an almost five year disease free survival uh, for THP. Um, here's the first question I want to throw out to people before we go into a little bit more specifics. Does the taxane matter uh, in THP when you give it? In the metastatic setting? Yeah, in the metastatic setting. I, I personally don't think it matters. I tend to, if they had a taxane in the adjuvant setting, I'll switch them to the different taxane. Certainly it matters in terms of tolerability. Um, in the part of the NCC and guidelines, weekly paclitaxel is included as an appropriate chemotherapy backbone for pertuzumab, trastuzumab based regimens. And so I find myself going to that probably more frequently um, than I do with the every three week docetaxel. Joyce? I tend to use the dose of taxol just because it's a, it keeps down the uh, number of visits to the clinic, and I know I'm going to stop it, give six or eight cycles and stop. So, but I agree. I don't think it makes any difference. I think nab pack with taxol is also reasonable, although I don't think it's on the guidelines, but I think it's quite, quite reasonable. Um, so I think, you know, I, I wish uh, we had a little bit more data on Vinarel bean. What we have looks promising, but it'd be nice not to lose hair. That would be a nice option for patients. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, no, I don't think it, it matters. Okay. So the other thing I want to get comments on before we get into a little more specifics from ASCO, um, what do we all think of Marianne? I mean, this is from last year's data. You know, TDM1, you know, antibody drug conjugate, spectacular, as we know, Kim, from, yeah. you know, and Sunil, you know, just spectacular data. You know, then we try to use it with pertuzumab up front. Yeah. And it's, no, it's just as good as, you know, TH. Yeah. So there was... Um the, the, you know, it was, a, it was a negative trial. Right. right. It was a negative trial in the sense that, you know, the, there was no ad, additional benefit of TDM1 pertuzumab over THP. But furthermore, or TH, uh, furthermore, um, there was no real um, synergy between pertuzumab and TDM1. And I think there has been a lot of sort of discussions as to why that is. And potentially you need enough trastuzumab to be present for the synergy to take place. And TDM1, as you all know, um, is 3.6 milligrams per kilogram. If you, you know, take a look at the, the proportion of the stable linker in the DM1, it's probably about 3 milligrams per kilogram of trastuzumab that actually exists in that compound, and, and not the 8 milligrams and the 6 milligrams sort of, you know, Q3 weekly do dose that we use. So it's probably not sufficient trastuzumab that's there for the synergy to take place. And, and, I think, um, and I think that's exactly what, what transpired there. Mm -hmm. um, it did show some interesting um, findings in the sense that there is some suggestion that those patients who have had prior adjuvant trastuzumab, that TDM1 is still more effective. So I think it's going to be really uh, adjuvant trastuzumab. So it's going to be really interesting to see as we take a look at the follow-up of that data, is there a role of TDM1 in those patients who have adjuvant trastuzumab um, because most of the patients in Cleopatra did not have adjuvant trastuzumab. Right. So if you compare actually cholesterol compar comparison, that's, I think, still an option on the table for those patients, we talked about taxines before, who don't want to go through hair loss, who don't want to go through chemotherapy, who don't want to have those therapies. I think there is a role for consideration of TDM1 in the first-line setting for such patients. The challenge that we have is then what do you do, th what do they get afterwards? Because we don't have any data for pertuzumab post TDM1. Right. Right, so that's why we tend to continue to use pertuzumab in the first line, and then we con consider TDM1 in the second line. Um, so I think, um, I think that's really what's holding us to with that same algorithm in place. Yeah. So, I, I, ahead, I, I just want, so I think I tend to agree with you on everything, except I, I didn't view Marianne as a negative study. It was an equivalent study, right. and it showed equivalence between TDM1 and traditional <coughs> taxane right. TRAS. And I think everyone's impression was that was a negative study, when in fact what it showed me was an ADC in the first-line metastatic setting offers equivalence to hair-losing, myelotoxic, taxane plus TRAS. So um, I think everyone's disappointed that pertuzumab wasn't additive or even synergistic with the TDM1, um, but it practically boils down to how do you sequence these so you can get them covered and where's the data, and I think it showed us that, the, that TDM1 is a very active agent. That's my perspective. It just didn't find its place in the first line setting. Yeah. So I think you're right, Kim. So for, it was negative in the sense that there was no additional benefit of bertuzumab to TDM1, yeah. but otherwise the fact that you know you can get an ADC in there uh, right. is just as effective. Yeah. And I think the other important point is if you look at the tails of the curve, 
you cannot, if you respond to TRAS and taxing, you cannot maintain that for years and years and years. And when you look at that, the patients stayed on TDM1 longer, and at least the tails of the curves for what it worth, the patients appeared to do better if they were long-term receivers of TDM1 because obviously the taxing was dropped out. So I, I think there's still some questions there, but I, I, I want to convey this message that I don't perceive Marianne as Oh no! I don't negative. think it's. I don't think it's it negative either. I would buy that. I think it is a trial. Is as good as chemo plus trials. Oh, I agree with you. I think it's more of an equivalence trial, but not a superiority trial. But before we get, because there was.